Hello, everyone, and welcome to our today's Quanser user webinar. We invited Dr. Jinjun Shen from York University's Lausanne School of Engineering to talk about the work in his lab focused on multi agent autonomous systems. My name is Zuzana Fabushova, and together with my colleague Oliver Zhang, we will be your hosts and webinar moderators today. Thank you, Susanna. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Oliver and I am the Regional Manager for Canada at Quanser. We have been working together with Lausanne School of Engineering at York University over the years, and especially with Dr. Shen. I, I just realized today that Quanser and Dr. Shen crossed paths back in 2003, which is almost 17 years ago. That's a, that's a long time ago. Uh, I had personally involved in quite a few teaching and research projects uh, with Dr. Shen's team, and it has been our pleasure to have opportunity to support his work and to grow together. So for those who, who does not know him yet, uh, here is Dr. Shen's uh, official bio. Uh, Dr. Jinjun Shen joined the Department of Earth and Space Science and Engineering at York University as an assistant professor in July 2006. He was promoted to associate professor in July 2011 and full professor in July 2016 and serves as the chair of ESSE and the um, undergraduate program director for the space engineering and space science program at York University. Prior to his appointment at York, he was a postdoc fellow at University of Toronto Institute of Aerospace Studies from November 2003 and uh, a, a research assistant at Department of Manufacturing, Engineering and Engineering Man Management at City University of Hong Kong from September 2002 to September 2003. He received his Bachelor of Engineering, Master and PhD degrees all from Harbin Institute of Technology, China in 1997 1999 and 2002, respectively. Dr. Shen was awarded the Alexander von Humboldt Research Fellowship for Experienced Researchers and JSPS Invitation Fellowship in 2012. He is an Associate Fellow of AIAA and a senior member of IEEE and a professor and a professional engineer in Ontario since 2007. His current research interests are dynamics, control and navigation, smart materials and structures, uh, multi-agent system and orbit dynamics. He is the funding director of the Space Craft Dyn Dynamics Control and Navigation Laboratory at York University. So now without any further say, I will pass it to Dr. Shen to start his the presentation and I hope all of you enjoy it. Dr. Shen, the floor is yours now. Okay, uh, thank you, Oliver, for your int introduction, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jin Jun Shen, and uh, today my presentation is uh, on the uh, multi-agent autonomous system, uh, the NAMS and uh, control and navigation. However, I want to make a correction uh, because at, uh, during today's presentation, I'm not going to talk about the navigation, and I will focus on the dynamics control, although uh, my group is working on the navigation for the multi-agent system. So, and uh, first, uh, uh, Oliver already gave, uh, gave everyone the uh, instruction on myself, and uh, right now I'm a, a professor of uh, space engineer at uh, uh, York University, and uh, I joined York in 2006. Uh, before that, I got my PhD from uh, Harvey Institute of Technology uh, in spacecraft uh, design. And uh, here is the uh, research areas of my uh, my group, and um, uh, we are mainly work on the dynamics control navigation uh, for space and aerospace and the mechanic system. Uh, and uh, of course, the autonomous system and the multi agent system um, are uh, two recent topics uh, uh, in, my, in, my, in my group. So this is also the topic of today's presentation. And uh, this slide shows the uh, my, uh, my collaborators, and uh, you can see Quanser is one uh, very important uh, collaborator uh, in my in my career. And uh, as Olive said, I'm, I have been working with Quanser since 2003 when I started my postdoc fellow at uh, Univers University of Toronto. 
And uh, okay, so uh, let's talk about the uh, topic for today's presentation, uh, multi-agent autonomous system. Uh, so actually on the slide, you can see a uh, multi-agent system. So you can see the first uh, figure is a bird, and uh, second one, I believe, is also bird. And we also have the fish and the buffaloes, and that is the top and the bottom. So you can see the that is a spacecraft permission fly and also the drone uh, swarm of the drones. So these are all the uh, examples of a multi-agent system. So uh, so actually that brings to the topic of the today. And also I have to say my my research on multi-agent autonomous systems started from the research on the spacecraft uh, or aircraft permission fly back to 2003 when I joined uh, U of T. And during that period, I worked with my collaborator, Professor Hugh Liu, um, and uh, we, we, we uh, developed a method, uh, we, invented, we invented a method called the motion synchronization control uh, for multiple dynamic uh, systems. And we got two uh, patents. One is the uh, US patent in 2010, and the other one is Canadian patent in 2016. So that is the mo motion synchronization. Uh, so basically, we want to synchronize the motion between multiple dynamic uh, systems. So the system does not have to be, uh, do not have to be a spacecraft or aircraft, and it could, it could be any uh, any types of the dynamic system. And uh, in terms of the multi-agent autonomous system, and this are uh, this slide shows several research findings in my group recently. Uh, the first one is the new one under the uh, Unsec Alliance. And uh, so this is the essential technology for autonomous system, uh, theory ver verification and applications. And uh, and also uh, uh, I'm leading a DND project on the effective human machine cooperation with the intelligent adaptive autonomous system. Uh, so basically we, for that project, uh, we, are, we are more, uh, in, uh, we, 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 we focus on the uh, human machine cooperation. And also uh, in 2017, I got, a uh, Certified grant to uh, set up the York Research Facility for autonomous unmanned vehicles. Actually, we purchased the uh, 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 sponsors uh, autonomous vehicle uh, research studio. So actually, that is a picture shows you. Uh, this picture shows you the our research facility at uh, uh, at York University. And now you can see we got uh, six uh, uh, Q uh, drones and uh, four Q boards, I believe. And also, we also we also got some self-driving cars. So uh, you can see, actually, the system is up and running since uh, May 2019. Uh, we have been working on this. Uh, we have been uh, using the facility to verify our uh, controllers uh, in the past year, uh, uh, or more than uh, one year, uh, since uh, May 2019. And uh, also, if you are interested in using this facility, and you can uh, contact me, and we can see what we can do. And uh, here, I want to give you, uh, show you a video. And basically, this video is uh, 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 just to show you the facility. Uh, uh, I just show you this is a uh, autonomous vehicle facility uh, in uh, our building. And uh, now you can see the Q drone. And uh, uh, this basis. Uh, this is a uh, very basic suggestion, uh, introduction to the Q drones, and we use the motion capture system to uh, get the position and the uh, position and the orientation of the drone and actually any object. And that is a Q bot, and 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 we also have the uh, something we we did some several dem demonstration to show you how can we play with the uh, the autonomous vehicles. And this is a multi-vehicle collaboration between the Q-Drone and the Q-Bot. And that is a drone transportation. And please pay attention to the end of the uh, mission. And you can see actually the vibration of the cable uh, or the payload is very uh, small because we use a particular technology called the input shaping. And this is uh, uh, the drone delivery. Uh, yeah, this is self-driving uh, research uh, currently under investigation in, in my group.
uh, pathway for, for my research in the multi-agent system. As I said before, uh, we, we developed the method called motion synchronization control uh, for multiple dynamic systems. And actually, uh, uh, since we, we had that technology and uh, we actually successfully applied that uh, uh, patent technology to an uh, uh, instrument called the fiber per spectrometer. So that is the uh, instrument led by uh, by my, my, my uh, by myself uh, and the, uh, and also supported by the Canadian Space Agency. So basically, the idea is to develop an image of fiber per spectrometer for observation of the Earth's uh, surface and aerosol. And the spectrometer has been validated through two successful uh, uh, high altitude balloon flights, which uh, are 40 kilometer high. Uh, so one in Sweden and uh, one in Australia in 2016 and uh, 2017. Uh, and uh, uh, in uh, May this year, uh, I, I got another uh, grant from the Canadian Space Agency, uh, the same product, uh, same program FAST, to develop a miniature fiber power spectrometer for potential uh, future, uh, for, for, for future satellite application. So you may ask uh, why this is related to the multi-agent system. So the reason is, if you look at the fiber pro spectrometer and pay it, uh, so actually here we have the, the key component is the fiber pro filter. So basically, this is the optical system which, which has two optical plates and are separated by three piezo actuators. And uh, the piezo actuators are used to adjust the gap spacing be between the, the two optical plates. Uh, and, uh, and keep in mind when we do, and actually that is called a scan. So when we uh, uh, perform the observation, uh, observation. We need to, we need to change the gap spacing at a, at a very high accuracy. Basically, it's a nanometer level. And also, keep in mind when we change the gap spacing between the two plates, we also need to keep the two plates parallel. So that means we have three actuators, three piezo actuators, and we need to synchronize the motion between the th the, the three uh, piezo actuators. So this is why we successfully applied the patent motion synchronization method to solve the gap spacing adjustment problem for this uh, instrument. And actually the, uh, the, the, the instrument has been uh, successfully developed in the past few years, and we had a two successful balloon flights. So actually, if you look at it here, uh, on, on, the, on the right, you can see the, uh, the animation. Basically, this is the observation, this is the measurement we had for the instrument, and you can see the peak of the of the wavelength is moving, so that means actually the gap space is adjusted. So actually, we use uh, 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 we use the patent motion synchronization method to solve the problem to get the synchronized motion between the two uh, sorry between the two plates uh, using the three piezo actuator. So actually, this is the one application of the uh, motion synchronization uh, method to the multi agent system. And that is the fiber part of the and we, uh, the, the final design. I'm not going to the details. And actually, I just want to show you this very interesting the flight in uh, Kiruna, Sweden on uh, September 3rd, 2016. And now uh, this is a balloon, which is a helium, uh, and it, view go up, it, it went up to the 40 kilometer. And then now you can see we have our instrument on actually close to ground. Uh, ground and this is uh, our uh, gondola and then it, it, uh, we release the blow and it will go up to uh, the 40 kilometer uh, altitude and actually our instrument uh, is looking down to 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 measure the earth surface and that, and again as I said during the, each observation and uh, the gap spacing between the two plates are uh, adjusted by the uh, by, by the three piezos. So actually this, again, so this multi-agent system. All right, so these are some, some pictures of, for our flights in Kiruna and Alice Spring uh, in Australia. And uh, uh, yeah, so this is a very successful uh, demonstration or, or, or mission, uh, space mission. So actually I want to show you here, now you can see we have the, uh, uh, actually the two figures shows the, uh, the motion of the Three piezos again. So as the, the three piezos are used to change the gap spacing between the uh, two plates. Now you can see, uh, uh, you can see actually uh, the three piezos can be, can be adjusted, uh, can be controlled to uh, to follow the the, the step input uh, at a very uh, fast response, 
fast response. And now you can see each step is some 19 uh, nanometer, and uh, and uh, the the control can be can be done uh, within uh, half uh, uh, yeah half second. So that is a very good result we got. And and actually, I have to say we did use the motion synchronization method to uh, to 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 adjust or to control the three piezos. And now uh, let's talk about the coverage control of a multi edge system and. Uh, 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 in addition to the to the uh, motion synchronization of the piezo actuator and the, our group also uh, did a lot of work on the uh, coverage control of multi agent system. Uh, here is the list of the uh, a controller or, con uh, or work we have done uh, in the past few years. Uh, so we had uh, done the distributed control, fixed time control, uh, even trigger, and also we we considered different uh, con communication topology. Uh, uh, and uh, we also uh, develop a controller uh, for, for tolerant control, uh, and uh, also uh, we uh, for space application, and we also have the uh, rotation uh, rotation metric based attitude control, uh, something like that. So next, I'm going to give you uh, uh, I'm going to uh, mention several of our research in this area, the carbon control of multi multi unit system, and. Um, so the first one basically is the fixed time consensus under uh, undirected graph. Uh, so now you can see uh, this is undirected uh, uh, graph. So that means that, uh, uh, the, the communication between agent one, agent two is a uh, uh, it's a bidirectional, and uh, same same for uh, agent two and agent three. So that is the undirected graph. And uh, the, the the contribution or the novelty of this work. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, and the fixed time consensus is not um, something new, and uh, on direct or direct graph are not something new. And the the, the novelty here is that we successfully applied the input shaping uh, to uh, this multi agent system. And uh, uh, if you know the input shaping, basically that is a, a technology uh, applied to uh, used for uh, vibration control. Okay, so here shows the the basic idea of input shaping. And the idea is to have the uh, command uh, sh shaped uh, uh, command shaped by uh, 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 impulse, and then the shaped command will be applied to the system. So this way, the vibration can be uh, surprised. So actually, here you can see in our research the fixed time consensus under uh, under the graph, and we apply the input shaper uh, under each. Uh, so actually, uh, under each layer, uh, so we can have a, a fixed time consensus controller uh, only uh, uh, by adjusting the reference command of each agent. So actually, this uh, work has been uh, published in uh, TIE, actually in TIE in 2019. And uh, here, uh, we use the quantum uh, SRV02. Uh, actually, we use the four of the system to verify uh, to, to 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 verify. The, the controller we developed. And actually, uh, let me play this again. So now you can see, actually, if you look at the, the, the full SRV, and actually the, the fixed, the consensus has been, has been achieved. And the next one is uh, fixed time consensus under uh, directed graphs. And uh, the, the, the previous work uh, uh, is uh, uh, fixed time consensus under undirected graphs. Here is uh, uh, direct graphs, so that means now you can see the communication between the leader uh, from the uh, leader one to leader six. So this is a, a one directional uh, co uh, communication topology. And again, so in this case, we also applied the input shaper uh, or input shaping technology uh, to the communication edge. Uh, so that is, we, we, we can get the novel consensus controller. And also, the conclusion is the setting time uh, of this uh, multi agent system depends on the communication network structure only. So now you can see on this uh, control, I mean, on, on this uh, diagram, you can see we have input shaper under each uh, 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 communication uh, uh, edge. And also because of the, the spatial uh, uh, structure, we we were able to uh, verify, uh, uh, we, we were able to verify uh, each. Uh, uh, link actually separately. So this why actually, let me see. Yeah, uh, should be here. So now you can see actually this is a, uh, uh, oh, yeah. 
So that is the uh, uh, experimental result, and you can see I believe we, because we can we can verify uh, each link separately. So this is why we only I only show you one uh, SRV02 uh, uh, for this uh, uh, experiment uh, uh, study. And our next one basically is uh, uh, so this is the distributed adaptive control of under acuser uh, OILA language systems, and uh, here we consider the both the fixed and the switching uh, graphs. Uh, fixed, I mean, this is the uh, uh, simple. So fixed, that means the the, top, uh, the communication graph is uh, fixed, uh, is, is unchanged. However, we also can see the switching graph. That means during the the the, uh, the mission and uh, the the communication graphs are switching. So the, so that is more more uh, more complicated. And uh, here we use the uh, uh, oh because this is the under acute uh, uh, OLA language system. So we use uh, uh, we still use the Qantas SRV02 uh, with a flexible link uh, for our for our test. I believe at that time we only have one uh, such system, so that's why we only uh, use uh, one uh, uh, for uh, Agent Four and for Agent One, Two, Three. They are all the simulation model uh, uh, in, in our in our work. And again, so this paper has been I mean this work has been published in uh, nonlinear dynamics in 2019. Yeah, let me show you uh, another uh, time. Yeah, now you can see that is the distributed adaptive control of the under acute OILA range system. And uh, keep in mind for this uh, for this work, uh, we uh, let the, the spacecraft, sorry, no spacecraft, we let, let the, the, the flexible beam to track a set point. So that means if you stop at one location, uh, so that is uh, uh, distributed adaptive control of under actuated uh, system. Uh, all right, so next one basically is uh, distributed fault tolerant adaptive control. And uh, uh, because this is a fault tolerant, and we consider uh, uh, from time to time the system may have some uncertain uh, parameters and some force, uh, acute force, and also exter external, uh, external disturbance. So we designed the distributed fault tolerant adaptive control to address uh, this uh, 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 difficulties. And uh, and also in this uh, research, and we uh, we uh, developed the finite finite time uh, observer uh, to uh, observe the leader's velocity. And here you can see we have four uh, flexible links as a four multi agent system. And again, so we only use uh, number four, uh, we only use the hardware uh, for number four and the number of well, agent one, two, three are all the numerical simulation, uh, sorry, numerical models. And uh, here you can see, uh, yeah, oh, uh, okay. Uh, keep in mind in this case, uh, the, the, the flex link is checking a, a, a sinusoidal function, I believe. It's not a, a, a set point. Uh, so, uh, so you can see uh, under this uh, fault tolerant adaptive control uh, controller, uh, the flex limb uh, is able to uh, track uh, the uh, the design uh, trajectory, uh, considering the uncertain parameters, actuator fault, and also the external disturb disturbances. All right, so that is the distributed uh, distributed fault tolerant adaptive control. And the uh, next one basically is um, uh, distributed iterative learning controller. Uh, the reason why we uh, develop the iterative learning controller uh, is because uh, we consider the system has repeatable uh, disturbance. So that is the reason why we uh, uh, apply or why we uh, uh, use the iterative learning control. So if you look at the, uh, the, the ISR, okay, so this ISRV02 from Quantum, now you can see, and uh, this is a cable. Uh, I believe this cable is uh, is a cable to get the uh, string gauge uh, measurement. So uh, so this is a flexible flexible link, and it has the string gauge uh, at the root of the link to measure the deflection of the beam. Uh, and the signal will be passed uh, through the uh, the cable and to the computer. And uh, now you can see uh, if you rotate the, the the link, and and basically the cable. Could be treated as uh, as a disturbance to the system, and also we can, we consider that is a repeatable disturbance because every time if you rotate the uh, the, the the link uh, to 
uh, to follow a uh, uh, let's say sinusoidal function, and then the, the the cable can be treated as a repeated disturbance to the system. So that is the reason why we decided to yeah, to uh, apply the iterator link controller for this multi agent system uh, because we can see the multiple of this uh, uh, this uh, uh, dynamic system. And also, we also consider uh, different uh, uh, other uh, 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 features of the system. For them, we also consider the uncertain parameters. So we we apply the adaptive control, and uh, uh, and also the system uh, uh, also the system uh, has non-repeatable disturbance. So the, then we, we we apply the we use the sliding mode controller for that, and for some data zones of the system have uh, uh, the system has. And we also have the data zone comp uh, composition. So basically, this is the distributed iterator and control. Uh, again, so our work has been published in actually TIE uh, in this year. And here is uh, 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 basically this is the experimental result you can see. Uh, okay, and this is the iteration one. And uh, you can pay attention to the two uh, agents on the left. Now you can see for the uh, iteration one. Uh, the motions are not uh, synchronized. Uh, uh, um, that is because uh, the disturb disturbance of the system and uncertainty of the system. And uh, uh, yeah, so this is the iteration one. Let me uh, put it uh, uh, two times B. And as time goes, and you can see, for example, this is iteration five. Now you can see actually the motion among the four uh, agents have been synchronized. Uh, and uh, that means actually our uh, iterative learning controller uh, works. I believe we also have, uh, so actually I believe we have more than iteration five, I think we do have, yeah, this is iteration 20, you, you can see actually all the motions uh, um, uh, of the uh, multi-agent systems have been uh, synchronized. And here we use, uh, in this uh, uh, experimental verification, we use the uh, four uh, isrv 2 with the flexible link uh, um, uh, to, to complete the task. All right, so that is the distributed iterative uh, learning control. And uh, uh, here is uh, another research, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah, this is another research uh, for the multi engine system. And uh, here we, we, we call this as a Kaufman operator based uh, attitude synchronization. Uh, so, uh, so actually, uh, the, the, the difficulty of the uh, multi engine system is if you have to, con if we have to consider the nonlinear system uh, and the, the, the dynamics and the control system design are, are normally uh, complicated. However, uh, since the, the 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 beginning of the multi agent system, and uh, there are, there have been many very good results uh, uh, developed and proposed for the uh, linear uh, system. Uh, so I think one idea is if we can have uh, uh, a linear multi agent system, and the many theories can be applied. So uh, so actually, uh, Kaufman, I believe uh, he proposed uh, uh, the the idea of uh, the Kaufman operator uh, many many years ago. And the idea is uh, uh, the behavior of a uh, nonlinear system uh, can be represented by an uh, uh, infinity dimensional linear operator acting on the observables of the system state. So that means if we have the nonlinear system and we can use uh, an infinity dimensional linear operator to uh, represent the, the, non the nonlinear system. So that means by the end of day, and we, are ha we, we have the uh, linear system and uh, and then we can apply uh, the linear multi agent system theory to solve the problem. Uh, however, uh, keep in mind uh, here uh, the, the the states uh, are not uh, sorry uh, for the for the uh, linear operator, and we we are not going to, we cannot use the the states of the nonlinear system uh, as a state. So we have to develop some uh, observables, or we have to ha use some ma measurement functions uh, as uh, uh, to represent. The, the linear system, or to represent the, the, the nonlinear system using the linear operator. So, so that is something we use the Kaufman um, coverage based uh, method to solve the attitude synchronization problem of a multiple uh, multi-agent system. So actually here, 
we uh, we use the the quantus the Q arrow uh, for Q arrow uh, to do the the test. Uh, now I can show you the uh, video. So basically, we, we we want to achieve the attitude synchronization among uh, the four uh, Q arrows, and uh, based on the Kaufman uh, method and uh, uh, the ITD synchronization can be achieved. And this work has been uh, has been done and published in uh, AWAG uh, GCD uh, in this year. Okay, I think this is uh, pretty much uh, 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 all my slides. So now you can see, I actually at the beginning, uh, we talked about the uh, the multi-agent system, and uh, we start from the permission file and also the uh, uh, the motion synchronization pattern. We apply the pattern technology to solve the uh, the synchronized synchronized motion uh, uh, between multiple piezo actuators to to uh, to uh, adjust the gap spacing between the optical instrument. And also, I talk about some cooperative control of multi-agent system and uh, most, uh, most, uh, uh, most uh, on the dynamics and the control part of, uh, of, uh, of this topic. All right, so uh, this concludes my, my talk and uh, uh, I, would I would be happy to answer your questions if you have. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shen. The first question is, um, in your opinion, what are the most important challenges regarding fault-tolerant control systems designed for autonomous systems? Uh, I, I think uh, we have done some work on the fault-tolerant uh, uh, system, uh, or fault-tolerant control uh, system design for multi-agent system. Uh, I think when we design the uh, fault-tolerant controller for multi-agent system, I think the, the most important thing is uh, 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 I think we had, I mean, not not a, not our group, and uh, I think many research have done a lot of work on that. I think, uh, but I think the, the most important thing is we have to be careful, or we have to uh, understand uh, where are the fault can come from. And uh, for example, we can consider the the fault due to the sensor, the due to the fault due to the uh, the actuator, and also how much fault will be. I think that is a very challenging uh, problem. Uh, so I think. Uh, in my opinion, I think we have to realize the uh, the, the reality of the of the uh, real physical system. Thank you. The next question uh, for the input shaping uh, based consensus method: Does each agent need to know the input signal from other agents? Uh, I think each agent needs to know the input signal from uh, from itself, because now you can see we have input shaper. Under, uh, let's say, uh, for example, uh, on this slide, you can see the input shaper has been uh, has been added to, uh, let's say, uh, if you have look at the, the the graph, right? And we added the the agent, sorry, the input shaper between agent one and agent two. So that means the system, uh, or oh, actually the, the input shaper, uh, input shaping uh, or input shaper, uh, we need to in order to design the input shaper, we need to get the input from uh, input one from agent one. Not not for the from other. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the distributed ILC method, uh, what kind of disturbances are there? Okay, so that is uh, I, let me go back to here. Uh, okay, so I think for the repeatable uh, disturbance, and we consider as I said, so we can we consider the, the cable disturbance as the repeated uh, disturbances, and uh, for the uh, Actually, for the uh, other uh, disturbances, uh, I believe the system has other disturbances. For example, uh, 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 another example. Uh, so, is uh, for example, if you have the so, for example, the, the system has uh, uh, let's say we have the the gear, and this may be also the disturbance on the, on the system, and some something like the imperfection of the of the system. This could be a, a disturbance to the system too. But I think okay. for, for the distributed IOC, uh, we mainly uh, target the repeatable disturbance, which is uh, the, the, the cable, uh, uh, the, the disturbance due to the cable. Okay. In your distributed control schemes, how would you consider the dynamic changes in the task goals for a group of agents? 
So actually, uh, we, we didn't consider the, uh, let's say for, for the models, and we didn't consider the dynamic change for the models of the agent. Uh, however, uh, I think if you remember in one of my, our controllers, we did consider, let's say, uh, if the communication topology is changing, so that is the uh, switching topology. So we, we, we did consider in that in our uh, in our control system design. Uh, maybe I, uh, this is the question, this answer to you. Uh, so we, we did consider the, the the switching topology in our control system design. So that is one uh, one case. And also, how would you consider the changes in the agent itself? Uh, the op operation conditions of each agent may change the dynamics. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we didn't consider that in our uh, in our uh, in our work. Uh, so uh, we, we yeah we didn't consider the, the the dynamic change of the operation condition. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question: uh, How can we reduce chattering problem in case of sliding mode control? Yeah, I, I think this the very general question, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, normally for the sliding mode control, uh, so uh, yeah, normally for the sliding mode control, so there's a chattering problem. Uh, I think we 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 did have this, uh, for example, yeah, for the uh, iterative learning control because we use the sliding mode control, and uh, I think the the, the chattering problem is always a problem with the sliding mode control. I think what we had to do is we have to carefully. Uh, design the the controller and choose a sliding service. Uh, try to avoid the the target problem. This, this is my answer. Um, thank you. So the next question: uh, What is the delay for the flexible manipulator agents? Um, it means communication delay between two agents. Yeah, I think communication delay uh, is one uh, one reason for the delay uh, because uh, uh, if you look at the Actually, if you look at it here, we also have the, yeah, for, for this uh, full uh, flexible link, and then now you can see uh, the two, uh, 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 sorry, the, the, the two flexible links, they have some, some delay. Uh, so yeah, I think the question is, what is the delay for the uh, flexible? Actually, let's say when we, when we have the, uh, the hardware system, and definitely we can, uh, for for our simulation and uh, even for our hardware test, and we can choose different delays uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the system, and uh, and also because we consider different uh, communication topology, and we can uh, we can also add the uh, delay uh, to the uh, uh, to to the system. So uh, yeah, I I I I still a little bit confused about uh, what is the delay for the flexible manipulator. Yes, and, and the delay of the of the flexible manipulator can be uh, can be uh, uh, can, can have different several reasons, but the communication delay is one well of that. Can the agents in the distributed system be exposed to different external conditions, or do they need to be in the similar type of environments? Yeah, this is a good question, and uh, and so far, uh, actually, for the for the work we have done and for the work I presented here. So uh, even for the distributed system, and uh, yes, the agent are in the in the uh, we consider the, the agent are the same uh, uh, environment or similar environment. We didn't consider a uh, very dramatic change uh, of the disturbance or, or environment to each uh, agent. But I think this is a good question, and this may be something uh, we are we are going to do uh, in the future. Um, yeah, so. Uh, so far, and we we consider all the agents are in the same type of the of the environment. But I think uh, uh, to answer your question, the first question uh, can can the agent uh, be uh, exposed to the different external conditions? My answer is uh, uh, yes, they, they they can, and uh, also depends on. Uh, for example, sometimes we when we have the uh, uh, external disturbance or or uncertain parameter, and sometimes we we said this. Is, as long as the, the the disturbance or uncertainty are bounded, so I think that is okay. Uh, so that will give us some uh, some uh, uh, room uh, for different uh, uh, external conditions. Um, but actually, uh, I have to say, for our research, and we didn't consider uh, they are totally. I mean, the agents are totally in different uh, 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 environment. 
but but I think that is very important because uh, in the future and uh, yes and the the the, the uh, multiple agents may be in different uh, uh, ex external conditions. I think that is a very uh, interesting topic to be studied in the future. Thank you. Uh, the next question. Uh, could your methods be applied to large scale system uh, where the number of agents is large? Well, uh, yeah, I think that is also a very good question. And uh, uh, I, I would say yes, but also there will be some uh, 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 restrictions, right? For example, uh, uh, the com communication, uh, sorry, competition a lot on how big is uh, communication burden. And I think depends on if we talk about the communication burden and then we we, we want to see whether the, um, the current um, computer uh, is possible uh, to uh, to address that. Uh, I think there are several hardware uh, uh, limitation or restrictions. Uh, so my answer is that the theory can be applied definitely uh, to the large scale system, but I think there may be some uh, uh, hardware uh, or even software uh, limitation, but so far uh, we have, for example, for the drone, I can say uh, uh, we have six drones and we were able to uh, fly six drones uh, in our lab. Uh, however, if you say whether you can you can fly ten drones together, my 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 point is yes, we could. However, uh, it will have it will put a high requirement on the on the computer, uh, especially for the on computer computer. So I think we, we did have some uh, some, some issues. Uh, uh, if we fly two or three drones, that is very easy. But if you fly four, five, six drones, uh, I think yes, and this is really challenging. But I think uh, yeah, the theory can be applied. But I think there's some uh, limitation uh, caused by the hardware. Uh, could you restate the multi-agent tracking control limitation for non-minimum phase systems? Yeah, I think we don't consider the the non-minimum non phase uh, system in our in our, in our uh, uh, study. Uh, uh, yeah, I I don't quite understand the restate the multi-agent tracking control limitation. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we 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 don't consider non-minimum non phase system in our in our uh, research. Uh, and actually, I'm not sure. For example, when we talk about the the flexible link, and uh, if we talk about the the deflection and also the control of the uh, of the, I mean, because for the for the, actually for the flexible link, and we only have uh, uh, one the motor which can it control the rotation angle, but there's no control on the on the deflection of beam. Uh, yeah, so I think this may be a non non minimum system. However, uh, for our uh, research, we don't consider the non non minimum phase system. Unfortunately. Okay, thank you. And probably the the last question: uh, What are the current challenges for multi-agent systems, especially multi-agent uh, UAVs? In your opinion? Uh, well, actually, there are. Um, I have to say for the the, the challenge for the multi-agent systems, and uh, there have been a lot of work done in this area and the multi-agent system and. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think there. I mean, research have achieved many achieve um, many uh, uh, achievement in the theory. However, I think the, the the most challenging part. So there are few uh, challenging part for the multi agent especially for the multi agent uh, UAVs. Um, uh, one is uh, I think someone mentioned before. So if we want to do the uh, uh, large scale uh, formation or large scale multi agent by using the UAVs. I think that is very challenging. Um, I think the hardware and uh, those are, are very challenging. And also how can we, uh, if we have the uh, large number of, uh, of the UAVs and if we want to do the uh, uh, successfully or effective uh, multi-agent or flying of the UAVs, I think uh, uh, how to make sure uh, the, the, the UAVs, there's no collision, and these are, are something very important. And also, this also plays many um, uh, many changes to the uh, control part and also the navigation part. Uh, yeah, I think there are also many challenges. Uh, I would say in the past decade or so, uh, there have been many re uh, development in the theory part of the multi system, but uh, 
how can we apply those theory to the to the real physical system and to 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 have some uh, uh, multi agent um, uh, tasks done? I think that is something uh, very challenging because this put it posed many challenges to other systems. For them, but the hardware and also even the software. And uh, yeah, I think there are many challenges. So yeah. with this, uh, thank you, Dr. Shen, for a great presentation. And um, I invite uh, you all to check our previous uh, user webinars. As you can see, we have a, a quite a few to share with the audience on different topics. Thanks, and um, we are looking forward to seeing you at one of our future uh, events. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye.